Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. In this video, we're going to simplify an expression with absolute value. Remember, in lecture videos, we talked about different concepts such as this one, the absolute value of a complex number, the definition for a complex number, the conjugate, so on and so forth. We talked about division, multiplication, lots of different things. Go ahead and check out the lecture videos if you need a refresher on complex numbers. Otherwise, we're just going to dive in. Now, we have the absolute value of the quotient of two complex numbers, x plus yi and y minus xi. Now, in this case, x and y are not zero at the same time, obviously, because that would mean division by zero. But otherwise, we are good, and we're going to simplify this expression. Now, are we going to find a numerical answer, or is that going to be in terms of x and y? We're going to see. I don't want to spoil the surprise. Okay, great. Let's let's get uh, to the problem. I'll be presenting two methods, obviously. And the first method is going to be, I apologize in advance, is going to be a little bit painful. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Before I take the absolute value, I'm going to divide these numbers. First of all, think about it. How do you divide two complex numbers? Do you remember this? If not, please go ahead and check out the video on division. I think I put it in the description. I can't remember which number was that, but I believe there was about eight or nine lecture videos on complex numbers. So we're going to multiply by the conjugate. Look at the denominator, y minus xi, and its conjugate is going to be y plus xi. So we have to multiply the top and the bottom by that. And then just simplify by multiplying, right? We're going to multiply across the top and across the bottom. How do you multiply two complex numbers? You just distribute. And don't forget, i squared is always, always negative 1. That's it. OK, let's do it. So x times y, xy, plus x times xi is, is going to be x squared i. And then yi times y is going to be y squared i. And then yi times xi, this is the most important part when you multiply the two i's. You're going to get i squared, which is negative 1. So that's going to give you minus xy. In other words, you kind of multiply the imaginary parts and just change the sign. Make sense? OK. Now this is going to be divided by the bottom. The bottom is the product of two conjugates. And remember, with two conjugates, the product is a real number. Again, that's in the lecture notes. And this, in this case, it will be y squared plus x squared. The real part squared plus the imaginary part squared, which is also the square of the absolute value. Make sense? I hope it does. Let's go ahead and uh, rearrange these terms. Uh-oh. I notice xy minus xy is 0, so they cancel out. Pretend to be surprised if you're familiar with complex numbers. And then we have two imaginary numbers. How do you add imaginary numbers? Easy. You factor out the i. Or you just add the imaginary parts. So this becomes x squared plus y squared, all multiplied by i. And at the bottom, I have y squared plus x squared. Again, x and y are not 0 at the same time, so x squared plus y squared does not equal 0. Would you agree that x squared plus y squared is the same as y squared plus x squared? I hope you would, right? So these two cancel out as well, leaving us with just i. Wait a minute. Is that the answer? No. We just simplified what's inside. What are we going to do next? We're going to take the absolute value. The question is then, since we started off with x plus yi divided by y minus xi, and we were trying to find the absolute value of this complex number, because when you divide two complex numbers, that's also a complex number, right? It does produce a complex number. And then, even when you raise a complex number to a complex power, it still becomes a complex Anyways, that's a different story. We're going to do it later. So. It's basically finding the absolute value of i. But i is just 0 plus i or 0 plus 0 comma 1. Its absolute value is just 1. So the answer is 1. Is that a surprise? Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. But let's go ahead and check out the second method. And we're going to try to confirm this finding. So the second method, what am I trying to find? The absolute value of x plus yi divided by y minus xi. By the way, uh, through these problems, hopefully, I'm trying to follow some type of progression. Just like in the lecture notes, we're going to do some basic stuff first, kind of build our skills, and then hopefully practice what we learned in the lecture videos. And then the problems are going to get harder, different topics, and then I'm planning to mix it all up. Okay? 
Anyways, please comment and let me know what you think and some suggestions. Anyways, so here's the second method. And for the second method, I'm going to have to introduce a property. And I apologize. I did not introduce this in the lecture notes. I don't know why. I totally forget about properties. But these, there's a lot of properties, by the way. But simply put, if you have the product of two complex numbers are z sub 1 and z sub 2, they, they, their absolute value, I don't know why I start with the second one, their absolute value is going to be the product of the absolute values. And this is true for real numbers too, right? I mean, it applies to real numbers as well, of course. You can do it. And with the quotient, you can do the same thing. And this is just awesome, saves a lot of time, especially with these kinds of sneaky problems that kind of measure that type of scale, right? So that's the property we're going to apply. Of course, z2 should be different from 0, needless to say, right? So here, what I'm going to do is separate this into a quotient of absolute value. So I'm going to write it as the absolute value of x plus yi divided by the absolute value of y minus xi. We're allowed to do this by properties. And what is the absolute value of x plus y? It is the square root of x squared plus y squared. You should know that, right, by definition. And it's distance from 0, in other words. The absolute value of y minus xi is the square root of y squared plus x squared, because you can have a negative x, but it's always going to be squared. So that's going to become positive. It's always the sum of two squares, never difference. Now, we just talked about this, right? These two are the same. So they cancel out, leaving us with 1, which is the absolute value, which is the answer, which is what we found with the first method, and of course, right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.